So I'm just sat here, I'm in a hotel at the minute, but I'm just reading through your comments about the uh, me having to get into a fight video and I'm loving the feedback from it. So the end of this video is a bonus story. So get ready for it. Good evening. Right, so today, I've got a busy day. I'm shooting off to Nottingham to uh, go collect uh, some Victron gear for my van. I've got to, um, I've got to pick up a, an inverter because I've not got an inverter. All I've got is this cheap Amazon inverter, which you're probably not going to be able to see. But I'm going to show you anyway. Oh, it was powering my light. That thing. There you go. That thing I have had for 18 months ish, I reckon. A little 250 watt inverter. Plugs into a cigarette lighter. Powers my TV. Powers everything. I had a Victron one in my old van, but I used that as well uh, in the front more than anything. Anyway, I'm going to go pick up a new Victron inverter today so I can get that plugged in, but also battery monitor, BMV. Pshh! Chicka chicka. Uh, going to pick that up today from Ecotree. Ecotree are a company that's helped loads of people out. Rob, in particular, at Ecotree is uh, is helping a lot of people. Just a sound guy. I speak to him most days. Talk a lot of crap with him. Uh, but anyway, me and Sean are going to drive down there in his overlander today to go pick up some bits. I did some filming at, uh, what they call it, layers I did uh, what they're doing. Tell us some old war stories. <laughs> during the war. Back during the war. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in the <laughs> Navy. <laughs> Shall I zoom out? <laughs> yeah, I might have to put some like age filter on to make him look younger. Yeah. Right, so I'm back in my van now, back from Echo Tree. I'm a bit embarrassed to show you my electrical setup, so I'm probably not going to show you my electrical setup. But the things that I got from Echo Tree, I'll just show you from Echo Tree. I got the Victron shunt, which I've kind of needed for a little while. I didn't get the battery monitor because. I don't want any monitors on show. I've not even got my diesel heater monitor on show. So I'm going for the minimalist where possible look. So I, it's all controlled by the app. I can just check the battery. Having this lithium battery, I'm a bit paranoid about things. So that's where, why I really want to be able to monitor it properly. But also I've got this. So this is the Victron Phoenix 800 watt inverter. Now in my last van, I had the 500 watt inverter. And the only time I ever needed more than 500 watts was charging one of the power up units. So I just this time, I just thought, you know what, I'll go a little bit bigger. And I'm, I'm probably never ever gonna need to power something at 800 watts. I'm gonna install that today. I don't use a lot of stuff, a lot of electrics. So I'm gonna use this, which the transit van customer has kind of let me use. It's left over from her build. So I'm going to wire the inverter straight to this. This is gonna be hidden around the back of the kitchen unit. And that is going to be all of my power in this van. It comes from there. Two USB ports and two uh, plugs. That's it. Whilst I'm at it though, I do have some other stuff. You've seen my video about the Orcs Beam spotlights and stuff. Well, Orcs Beam have sent me some more stuff. Uh, and they've sent me this fuse board. This fuse board. And also this controller. And you'd be fooled into thinking that it's just the same as what I've got. However, it's not. This is the Bluetooth powered one, which is what I was trying to tell you about before. So now, everything's gonna be controlled by Bluetooth. Now, if I set this up right, it's actually gonna be really cool. There's gonna be more things that I can put into that fuse board to just turn them all on by the app, including the house lights. So anyway, I'm gonna get cracking with that and I'll keep you updated on how it goes. I just got camera errors for no reason. I'm just gonna start it all again. So, battery monitor is now fitted, as you can see from the Victron app, right here. 
You may also notice this badger. Whoop! Orcs beam. This is the new one. It looks exactly like the other one, but it's not like the other one. This is good because everything's on here. I pointed out to you before my camera, reverse camera, rear lights, floodlights, and grill light. Uh, I've got space for some others. I am probably going to put my kitchen lights and my ceiling lights on here also but also then I'll have a spare one for something else on my phone I have the switch panel <laughs> switch panel app I'm getting good at the zooming in business aren't I switch panel app so now I can turn the camera on I'll just zoom out so you can see the camera there you go there's the rear of the workshop and then it goes into that mode I can then press this button here Boop. it turns the reverse setting on like so eh? it's looking good so far isn't it and then I can turn on uh, grill lights which you can see rattling around in the distance there I can turn on the rear lights which you can kind of just see coming on the back there and then I can turn on the main spotlights which you can probably see there but the main beauty of this is that I can whilst I'm in bed I could turn on my cameras if I hear a noise outside whilst I'm in bed I can turn on these bloody spotlights here I can turn on the grill light which is here All from the app. That one. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, and then that one. All from the app. Which, again, from a security point of view, is pretty damn good. Whilst I am uh, in the back with all the curtains closed or in bed, if I hear a noise outside, I can turn the cameras on, I can start recording and I can scare the shit out of people by putting all the spotlights on so as you've just seen this is the inverter I've got 800 watt inverter the inverter is now in place where it should be and now the only thing I really need because I don't use a lot of power the only thing I really need is this now thank you to the transit customer who had this spare and let me use it just need to charge my phone from that the TV I can use from this or I can use it to charge my Bluetooth speaker up but very rarely do I use 240 in this van usually I just use these USB ports you have to excuse the mess I've not finished painting it or anything yet but that'll get done another time but usually I just use these two USB ports uh, and a very small inverter I've got an 800 watt inverter which is more than enough more than enough more than enough so thanks to Echo Tree for sorting me out they really hooked me up with this Victron stuff I really appreciate it plus they've been there to support me while I've been uh, support me with some of the settings and stuff so that's good right okay so this happened on halloween halloween night so i went to go visit my friends in uh, in castleton everybody knows castleton anybody that knows castleton will know exactly what i'm talking about the devil's arse car park the devil's arse is a cave in castleton big gaping hole devil's arse i don't know who came up with that name pulled into the devil's arse car park or peak cavern car park found a parking space it was relatively busy Pull up into parking space. I'm just turning things off and doing my normal thing, taking steady, you know. Next minute, a figure appears at my window and he's got an axe in his hand. And he's leaning in like this with an axe at my window. Instantly, I shit my pants. Like you would. Dark car park. This is at night time. Probably, I don't know, 8 p.m. or something. A fucking guy with an axe stood. And my door was unlocked and everything. And I panicked, right? He then moved away and I couldn't see where he'd gone. I was trying to look around, look in my mirrors, couldn't see where he'd gone. It was like something off a horror film. Um, I eventually plucked up the courage. Uh, in fact, I saw, him in my, I saw him in one of my wing mirrors moving away. So I plucked up the courage to get out of the, out of the van. And I thought, weirdly, I thought, I'm going to have to put some layers on. So I jumped in the back of my van very quickly, put a hoodie on, put a big coat on, everything. I was like, if this guy attacks me with an axe, I need to be fucking prepared for this. I don't know why I didn't just drive off. As I got out of my van, I saw him go to another car that had two women in it, and he was leaning over, and I was like, 
fuck, he's gonna fucking kill somebody. What's this guy doing? Like he's drunk. I don't understand what's going on. Again, all these thoughts go through my head dead quick. So then he moved away from their car and just stood in the middle of the car park with this axe. And he's a big like wood chopping axe, you know what I mean? Big, big axe. And he's just rocking backwards and forwards in this car park. I was like, fucking hell, this guy's crazy. Where's he escaped from? So I was like, right, I'm just gonna have to do something about this because he's gonna hurt somebody. So I tried to be the hero. Again, I'm not really violent, but the last two stories make out like I am, but I'm not. This is like to help people and, and in self-defense and that. And I would have had to walk past him anyway to get to where I wanted to go. So I'm right, best thing to do is just run up behind him and just clout him side at face, knock him out. He won't expect it. He won't be able to swing swing the axe at me or anything. Just knock him out. So I snuck up behind him and last second, he, he had the axe sort of down at that point. At last second, I changed my mind from the sucker punch and decided to grab the axe off him. And what I thought to do is, if I grabbed a hold of the axe firmly and pulled it down, he wasn't holding it the tightest he could hold it because he wasn't expecting anybody to try and take it off him. So I snuck up behind him, tried to grab the axe and pull down as hard as I can to get it off him, and then I could disarm him. So, that was it. Grabbed hold of it, pulled down on it, and bang at the same time, I heard him say, what are you doing? And the axe bent in half, and the axe was rubber, and he was like, what are you doing? I'm an actor, I'm an actor. I was like, what do you mean you're an actor? All this happened in slow motion, obviously. What do you mean you're an actor? Screw the actor. I'm part of the thing that's going on here. I was like, what fucking thing? They were playing The Shining at the cave and he was an actor paid to walk around. He was dressed like the guy from The Shining, but I didn't notice that. And we were just like, right, well, right, oh, fuck. Anyway. That was it. I walked off my tail between my legs. I nearly knocked the guy out because he had an axe. Anyway, if anybody knows that guy, I'm sure... I, I did go back later on to try and look for him, to talk to him, and I'm sure he would see the funny side of it. But if anybody knows the actor that played the guy in The Shining, not actually Jack Nicholson, the actor that played the guy from The Shining at Castleton, find him, find him, because I think he'd find it funny. Anyway... Thank you for watching this video. Really appreciate it. I love you all dearly. Bye, Felicia.